Hi, this is Chad from Slate Digital, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to MetaPitch, the newest plugin to be added to our All Access Pass subscription. Now, a few months ago, we released something called MetaTune, which was a pitch correction uh, plugin that would basically fix any intonation errors in a singer and you know snap their pitches to the nearest pitch in a scale. Uh, and meta pitch is similar, but it's not automatic. It basically gives you full manual control of the pitch shifting algorithm so that you can do with it as you please. So let's take a look at how this thing works and see some of the creative things we can do with it. All right, this is the meta pitch interface. And as you can see, the two main controls on here are this pitch knob and this format knob. And there's a little box between it, which when you click it on, makes the two knobs move together. And, uh, Let's play some audio through this and see what happens. Always be your love, always be your love, always be your love, always be your love, always. Sure enough, it's a pitch shifter love, and it can go down an octave love, or up an octave or anywhere love, in between. Be your love. Now, some of you might recognize this style of pitch shifting as just kind of well, it's not really pitch shifting. It's just sort of that sound you get if you sped up a record or pitched up a sample in a sampler. It, it quickly sounds unnatural when it gets moved up. And that's because all frequencies in the audio coming in right now are getting shifted up or down, which is not really how our bodies work when we try to sing different pitches. Now we have two knobs on here for pitch and format because meta pitch is intended specifically for vocals. And so we wanna control these two components in the, independently. Now, pitch is pretty clear. That was the pitch that uh, she was singing, oh, 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 and that comes from the vocal cords. Um, just by tightening them or loosening them, you'll create different frequencies, and that's how you sing the different pitches, and that's basically what this knob corresponds to. Always be your love, always be your love, always be your love. Aha! Uh -huh. So now, while formats stay in place and we just move the pitch, she still sounds like herself just singing at a higher pitch or at a lower pitch, right? It maintains the characteristic of her voice without it turning, you know, cartoonish or demonic as it was doing previously. And that's because the formats are staying in place. But what are formats? Well, like I was saying, sound comes from the vocal cords, but in order for it to get out to your ears, it has to come through the body, out, you know, out the mouth, and on the way, it creates vibrations in the body. It resonates in various parts of my head, in my sinus, uh, in my chest, and things like that. And because these things aren't changing size, no matter what I sing, those resonances always stay the same. And so there is certain resonant frequencies that are getting amplified, others that are getting cut, and our brains learn this kind of as a sonic fingerprint for each voice. It's this static resonant frequency from my body coupled with the harmonics coming from my vocal cords that the brain uses together to say, okay, that's the voice of Chad. So even if someone else was singing the same thing I was in the same pitch, you would still be able to tell that's a different person because their sonic fingerprint of their formats uh, are different from mine. And, you know, when we move the pitch, it's clear that, okay, it was the same person singing at a different pitch. But as soon as we move those formats by themselves, we quickly lose the identity of the person who is singing like this. Always be your love. Always. Right. Be your this doesn't sound always. like her anymore. It's immediately be gone into that cartoonish realm or down into that demonic always. realm. Always. Which is really cool. I, I think this is uh, really fun to do. But that's just to illustrate these two different components that are always working at the same time uh, in, in a vocal. Now, we can do something really weird by, you know, instead of moving these things together, we can maybe move them in opposite directions, like turning up the format and then shifting down the pitch. Aha! Now we've got something that sounds almost like a, a droid from Star Wars or something like that. That's pretty cool. But if you wanted to go full robot, we've actually got a little switch up here in the corner, which is on shift right now. We were just doing a straight pitch shift. But if we slide this over to robot, now you'll see that the pitch knob changed and it says C3. And that's basically telling us that anything that comes into meta pitch is going to go out at C octave three, 
or in this case, maybe we'll change it to C octave four. And uh, let's take a listen to what happens. Always be your love. Always sure enough, love, she was singing a melody before, love, but that melody has been be obliterated love, to just be always, only on this pitch of C4. Always, and you can choose a different love, pitch. Always be your love, always be your love, always or choose a different your octave. Love, always be your love, always. All right there from that love, control. Always be. In fact, if you set up a MIDI controller to feed the MIDI into uh, meta pitch, you can also play this from uh, a MIDI keyboard like this. Always be your love, always be your love, always be your love, always be your love. Always. Right. So it doesn't matter even what the original melody was in the vocal. You can just slap this into robot mode and then literally play the melody that you want on your keyboard and the vocal will conform. It's pretty cool. But there's some other little tricks that uh, MetaPitch has uh, along the bottom here for additional sound design. There is a drive knob, always be your love, which always adds like saturation and distortion love, always, to the sound. Love, there's also a widener. Love, so if you've got always, your headphones on, you'll hear that this love, voice is now always, suddenly gone stereo, kind of out to the peripherals. Love, always, there's also a filter, love, always, so you could remove love, components always, of the sound if you wanted to. Love, always, so I could, for example, do something like this, and then using the mix knob, I could blend that sound in with the original. So maybe I take this up seven semitones and set the mix to about 50. Always be your love, always. And there's this parallel love, fifth always, singing on top now, love, right? Seven always, semitones creates love, a parallel fifth. Always, so that's what's happening love, here. Always be your love, always be your love, always be your love. So it's kind of like an instant harmony, if you will. And uh, down here in the bottom left, there's a little button that says low latency. If you turn that on, that will put meta pitch into a low latency mode, which will allow you to um, potentially even uh, track through this. I mean, you can sing, um, play an instrument through this uh, without the latency causing uh, an annoying slapback. And uh, we still recommend though, that you turn that off and just go back, you know, Turn that button off when you're going to do uh, your final mix down because that will improve the sound quality of the algorithm. There's also a little button up here in the top which will give you a more compact view of this. So if you have a smaller screen or there's lots of plugins available, you can just switch to this mode. It doesn't remove any control or reduce the functionality. It just presents everything in a slightly uh, more compacted view for you to use. All right, so let's take a look at how we can actually use this uh, for some fun stuff in a track. All right, so this track uses that same vocal sample we were just playing with a moment ago. It makes use of it as the main lead or melody. And it starts out right here at the beginning with that sample. But what we've done is we've taken it up four semitones to match the key of the song. And we're also automating the format to kind of create an interesting uh, intro. Check it out. So I think that's pretty cool. And uh, format can also be used uh, for automating things like this. This is just the same note over and over again, but the format is moving around to give it a little bit of motion. Right? So uh, that can be just a fun way to give a little bit of life to something that would normally be uh, kind of static. Now, back to the vocals again, there's uh, a breakdown here. And while this breakdown is happening, there's gonna be a second voice coming in, which has different settings, right? We're up four semitones here, but this track has it down eight. So it's essentially an octave lower than before. And with its particular settings, it's gonna have a kind of gravelly sound like this. And when that gets layered on on top, it's a really cool sound. Without, with, So it's just kind of like an extra robotic texture, if you will. And um, there's a interesting use case here of uh, robot mode. So normally this little sample here, if I solo it, sounds like this. But I've got a MIDI track set up and its MIDI notes are going out to this instance of meta pitch. So that means those MIDI notes will control the keyboard here determining which pitch actually comes out of meta pitch, and therefore that sample sounds like this when played back. 
That's where that little melody comes from. So you can just play anything you want in there on any sample and then you get a new melody out of it just like that. The last thing here to take a look at is this TB303 part. And uh, TB303 is a kind of analog synthesizer, uh, monophonic, so it's just making one note at a time. And uh, we put it through here in robot mode, so it's forcing all notes to just one pitch and uh, automated the octave and the format to get some uh, interesting sounds out of it that you normally wouldn't get out of the device, which kind of sounds like this. So this is part of the buildup in that breakdown. Yeah, so feel free to experiment with putting all kinds of weird noises through uh, MetaPitch. It doesn't have to be vocals. You might get some really interesting and inspiring ideas by putting uh, who knows what through this thing and just playing around with the results. So there you go. That is MetaPitch in a nutshell. Now, as I say at the end of all these videos, the best way to learn any sort of musical tool is to get your hands on it and try using it yourself in your own musical production so you can understand all the nuances, details, and uh, funny little things it can do. Uh, and it can sometimes inspire you with all kinds of new ideas. So as I mentioned at the top of the video, Meta Pitch is available right now in the All Access Pass subscription. So if you are a subscriber, just launch Slate Digital Connect on your computer and you'll see Meta Pitch sitting there as one of the plugins ready to install. You'll be able to install it and use it immediately. But if you're not yet a subscriber, just head over to slatedigital.com and you'll be able to sign up for the All Access Pass subscription. Or if you wish, you can add the SSL Complete subscription on top for a little bit more, and then you'll have a huge number of plugins, instruments, sample banks, the Slate Academy tutorials and videos, all at your disposal. Everything you need to take your music productions up to the next level to just make them sound completely awesome. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.